Please take your Bibles and turn to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12. That's page... kind of lost it here, I'm sorry. You've got it by now anyway, haven't you? Page 1238. And reading the first four verses, and then turning to yet another scripture. 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. We'll read the verses responsibly. Let's stand, please, for the reading of the Word of God. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above fourteen years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven, and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm sorry, you're right. (laughs) <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 2 still First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 and we'll read that together ready but as it is written I have not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And let's pray. Father, it's been a wonderful thing to dwell upon the things of heaven. There are a lot of folks we've known from this church family who are now with thee. And it must be an exciting thing for them to have us think about the place where they are. There are loved ones of ours who are with thee. In fact, the idea of heaven just gets more exciting all the time. Thank you for this church, for the preaching of the gospel, for if it were not for the preaching of thy word, there would be no need to mention heaven. We pray that you'd bless our preacher tonight. Help us to give careful attention now to thy word. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I want you folks in the mezzanine to come down here if you would. Well, you, I'm sorry, we don't have no seats. Um, son, I want you to stay right well, where you are now. I don't want you moving during the service. We've had some running around in the mezzanine uh, tonight and uh, and this morning. You stay where you are. If you move, I'm going to shoot you down. I've got guns right up here outside these black things here. And i got men watching all the time. And uh, it goes for you folks sitting on the lower floor also. I've been dwelling this afternoon a good deal about that little five-year-old boy I got saved this morning. A five-year-old child, I think it was a boy. The the child whose father went to heaven just uh, not too long ago. And I got to thinking about that father in heaven, what a time he's been having today. What a good time he had this morning. I hope I've made heaven real to you in these Sunday night sermons. I hope I've made it uh, the journey there a little more palatable for you. I don't want to die. I want to go to heaven straight up. But uh, but I certainly do thank God tonight as I realize even tonight Dr. Curtis Hudson is uh, sort of on the threshold of the holy city. The doctor says, please listen to me now. Do your talking later, would you mind? Uh, Dr. Hudson's on the threshold of the holy city tonight. In fact, the doctor said it was uh, probably months, and now it's probably days. And because of that, I flew down Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening, to see him, thinking I might not get to see him again if I didn't hurry and do it. And um, Dr. Billings, of course, says uh, we think may not be too far away from the holy city. And by the way, you're just a few days away yourself. And so we we ought to know something about our future. 
I want to speak tonight on the subject, I have not seen or ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for those that love Him, our Heavenly Father. I cannot begin to describe the place that you prepared. Humanity can't describe the work of deity. I can't describe the work of heaven any more than I can understand or make a plan to get to heaven. I pray tonight you'd help me to make heaven just a bit more real for our people and make our loved ones in heaven just a bit closer to us who are soon to join them. In Jesus' name, amen. Paul was caught up into the third heaven. The first heaven being the atmosphere, the second heaven being the planetary system, and the third heaven being a home of the redeemed. Paul was caught up in the scripture Brother Colston read for us a while ago after it took 30 minutes for him to find it. He, uh, he, Paul was caught up into the third heaven. And he comes back, and I say to Paul, what did you see? And Paul says, absolutely nothing. Are you listening? Absolutely nothing. He will not say one single word about heaven. I say, Paul, what did you hear? He said, what I heard was not lawful to tell. There's a law in heaven against telling what what Paul heard there, because it may be not be comprehensible by human mentality. So Paul simply said, "Heaven is far better." That doesn't say much, but that's all we could understand. He says such things as it's paradise, or. He has the desire to depart. Or to die is gain. Doesn't say what we gain, just says to die. Look at me now, listen to me now. To die is to gain. He simply says it's a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. He says we groan for it. He says we earnestly desire it. He says that it is a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And finally, in desperation, the Apostle Paul simply says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. I have not seen... Son, I told you to sit still. Now sit down. Sit down right where you were. At. Just sit right there. This is one place where the kids don't run it. The Apostle Paul said, I have not seen. I say, Paul, what did you see? He said, you wouldn't understand it if I told you. Because you've never seen anything like it. And there are no figures of speech that I could use for you to understand it. He said, I have not seen. Now that means that where you and I are going, those of us who are saved, human eye has never set on anything like it. I have seen the Rocky Mountain Empire ruled by Her Majesty, the Regal Pikes Peak. But I have not seen the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. I have seen the gorgeous Grecian Isles fleeing from the lovely Athenian paradise. Maybe the most beautiful place I've ever seen in the entire world, the Grecian Isles. I have seen, but I have not seen the things that God has prepared for those that love Him. I have seen the palm tree platoon of leafy soldiers parading in balmy Palm Beach. I have seen that, but I have not seen what God has prepared for those who love Him. 
I hath seen the lovely Taj Mahal, perhaps the world's most famous, famous valentine, but I hath not seen the things that God has prepared in heaven for you and for me. I hath seen the springtime dogwood trails interspersed with magnolia corsages on southern roads, but I hath not seen the things that God has prepared in heaven for you and for me. I have seen the last judgment painted by the Michelangelic brush on the canvas of the Sistine Chapel walls, but I have not seen the things that God has prepared for us in heaven. I have seen the diamond-like morning dew, the evening showers glistening like millenniums of carrots of stone, but I have not seen the things that God has prepared. Paul, you went up there and you saw it. What did you see? Paul said you wouldn't understand it. There's nothing to compare it with. You've never seen anything like this. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the wonderful thing about heaven. We don't know what it's like. Everything up there is going to be a delightful surprise to us. I have not seen. Paul said, or, I, I have not seen. I have seen. Chandeliers of stars courting in the darkness with the moon as their nocturnal chaperone. But I have not seen the things that God has prepared for those that love Him. I have seen streets of beautiful cobblestone running in search of lovely quiet quaintness in shy and timid little villages. But I have not seen, are you listening to me? I have not seen. You've seen the beauties of this earth, but you've never seen anything like the place where my mama is tonight. You've never seen anything like the place Dr. Hudson's going to see in just a few days or a few hours. I'm telling you tonight, don't be too discouraged. If, if, if you've got to face death right away, don't be too discouraged. I, I don't want to leave people I love, but I'll tell you what, brother, I'm going to have a time. I have not seen. I have seen majestic diamond head placed in a setting of yellow Hawaiian gold. But I have not seen the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. I have seen fields of Honolulu's orchids beaded on lays of deity gracing the neck of Oahu. But I have not seen the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. I have seen King Redwood reigning over the wooded Northern California kingdom. But I have not seen the things prepared by God for those who love Him. I have seen the welcome mat beneath the golden bridge with arms outstretched to foreign guests, but I have not seen the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. I have seen Christmas time when the earth appears to be one big Christmas ornament on a planetary tree, but I have not seen the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. I hath seen diamonds and rubies and pearls and emeralds and the amethyst and gold and silver and chalcedony and the jacinth and platinum and sardius and sardonyx and topaz and jasper and sapphire, but I hath not seen the things that God hath prepared for those that love Him. <laughs> Just think, all the beauties I've described tonight available to you, and some of you are choosing to go burn in hell forever. You've got a mighty stupid IQ. I mean, you're sort of dumb. I mean, you're an idiot. You sit with the house. Why do you call me an idiot? Because you're an idiot. I'm simply saying, you've got this place to go to if you want to, or you burn forever in the fires of hell with the devil and his angels as an intruder forever and ever and ever, and all you've got to do is trust the Savior and go here. There's something wrong with your mentality. <laughs> but you say, I'm an intellectual. No, you're not. You're a dumb bunny. I have seen the plains of golden grain. I have seen parades. Listen to me now. You can talk after the service is over. I have seen parades of pretty pines. I have seen countless comely clouds. I have seen the badiola, the rose, the tulip, the daisy, the carnation. I have seen the dogwood, the gardenia, 
the red bud, the chrysanthemum, but I have not seen the beautiful flowers that God's prepared for those that love Him. I have seen the cedars of Lebanon, the sequoias of California, the pines of Carolina, the olive of Israel, the birch of Washington, the oak, the maple, the fir, and the vine, but I have not seen the beautiful trees that God has prepared in heaven for those that love Him. I have seen the blue danube, Mississippi, the Tigris, the Euphrates, the Nile, and the Amazon, but I have not seen the beauty of the river of life that God's prepared in the holy city for those that love Him. <laughs> I have seen the Alps, the Smokies, the Rockies, the Adirondacks, the Sangre de Cristo, the Himalayas, and the Ozarks, but I have not seen the beauty of the terrain that God's prepared for those that love Him. I mean, boy, if I said to you, let me describe something beautiful to you. Let me describe how are you to me. Let, you, let me describe the, uh, the uh, Grecian Isles to you. And I describe all their beauty. And God said, I don't care if you've seen all of it. You have never seen anything like the city I prepared for you. I have seen the works of da Vinci and Michelangelo graven in stone and painted in canvas. I have seen the rainbow, God's promissory note, that there'll be no more worldwide floods. I have seen the San Francisco Lombardi Street, Chicago Michigan Avenue, and England's Downing Street. But I have never seen a golden street, a street paved with gold. <coughs> Years ago, a certain mayor up in Hammond were calling and giving me some trouble. And he said to me, I went up to the mayor's office and I was giving him a little trouble. And, uh, and I told him, I said, uh, you keep, uh, keep treating us like that and you won't sit in that chair next time after the election. Because we got enough folks, we ain't got enough folks to elect me, we've got enough folks to keep them electing you. He said, let me tell you, the moneyed people, I said, brother, I said, your money is just concrete pavement where I'm going to go. I mean, don't, you, it's like you coming to my office and bringing a bucket of asphalt and saying, I want, some, I want you to give me some attention. I said, brother, we pave the streets. Well, we don't, but we should in Hammond. We pave the streets with asphalt in my town. Well, bless God, in the place God prepared for me, they pave the streets with gold. Did you notice that rhythm we went down with? Da, 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 da. <coughs> I have seen freshly fallen snow of a white Christmas, but I have not seen the things prepared that God's prepared for those that love Him. I have seen God, Chicago's magnificent lakefront and skyline. I have seen a Pentecost where 3,000 people are saved. I have seen the feeding of the 5,000. I have seen the raising of Lazarus. I have seen the opening of blind eyes. I have seen the opening and unstopping of deaf ears. I have seen the Calvary. I have seen the empty tomb. I have seen manna from heaven. I have seen the drying of the Red Sea. I have seen even the face of Jesus Himself. But I has never seen from Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden to the last time uh, that a person breathes on this earth anything like God's prepared for those that love Him. I have seen the Mediterranean Sea, the Sea of Galilee, Palm Beach, the Rocky Mountains, the Rain Forest, St. Thomas, Cancun, Pikes Peak, Trail Ridge Road, Niagara Falls, Grand Canyon, Gulf of Mexico, Washington, D.C., Maine in autumn time, autumn leaf time, the Royal Gorge, Acapulco, the Caribbean, Hong Kong, but you ain't seen nothing yet. You may have seen all of this, but you ain't seen nothing. Paul, <laughs> look, you went there, didn't you? Yes, I did. I was caught up there. I, I saw it. What did you see, Paul? Paul says, I have no phrases or sentences or words to describe it. I have no adjectives or adverbs or verbs or nouns to describe its splendor and its beauty. I have no figures of speech, no hyperboles, no parables, no, no oratory, no sounds. I have no way to tell you 
because I hath not seen. Ladies and gentlemen, I've heard of a place that's called heaven. Tis home of the happy and free. Sweet haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. In God's name, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. I hath not seen. Well, Paul, okay, Paul, okay. You can't tell us what you saw. Tell us what you heard. You were up there, weren't you? Yeah. You can't tell us what you saw because I have not seen. We wouldn't understand it. <laughs> tell us what you heard. Nor ear heard. Nor ear heard. Ear has never heard the glorious vial to the holy city. Ear hath never heard the sweet language of the heavenly city. Ear hath never heard the beautiful harmonic music of the holy city. Nobody has ever heard. Ear hath heard Handel's marvelous Messiah. Ear hath heard New York Symphony Orchestra. Ear hath heard the London Philharmonic. Ear hath heard Strauss's blue denim, blue, 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 blue denim and lace walls. <laughs> the blue, the blue denim walls by Strauss, by Strauss. The blue denim walls by Strauss, by Strauss. Even I am not perfect. Ear hath heard the sound of the whippoorwill. Ear hath heard great congregation sing, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Twas blind, but now I see. But ear has never heard the music of heaven. Ear hath heard what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Ear hath heard on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. Hell, ear hath heard, come thy fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy never ending or ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Oh, to grace how great a debtor. Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Ear hath heard those beautiful old songs of the faith, but ear has never heard the beautiful sounds and harmonies and vials that God has prepared for me. Ear hath heard majestic sweetness sets enthroned upon the Savior's brow. Ear hath heard there's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. Ear hath heard all hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Ear hath heard when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. Ear hath heard the swelling strains of the hallelujah chorus, but ear has never heard the beautiful sounds that God has prepared for those of us who are His children. Ear hath heard the commencement's pomp and circumstances. Ear hath heard the bridal wedding march. Ear hath heard the solemn vows I take thee to my wedded wife to heaven to hold from this day forward for better for worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and health, to love and cherish till death do us part. Ear hath heard the world's most coveted phrase, I love you. But ear has never heard what it'll hear in heaven. Paul, you went there. Good night, Paul. Tell us what you saw. I can't tell you what I saw. There's no language to describe it. Then tell us what you heard. I can't tell you what I heard. There's no way I can describe it. You never heard anything like this. Look, think of the best things you've ever seen. It's better than that. Think of the greatest sounds you've ever heard. It's better than that. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God for heaven tonight. Air hath heard the snuggly sound of a winter wind. Air hath heard my alma mater's alma mater. Air hath heard, thank you, and please, and I'm sorry, and excuse me, and I love you too. Ear hath heard you're forgiven. Ear hath heard victory, pardoned. Ear hath heard Archie leaves payday someday. Ear hath heard 
Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, Air hath heard as Morrison dies, glisten, and his uh, erect bodies tingle, the star-spangled banner as the old glory waves in the wind. Air hath heard. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Ear hath heard the voice of Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. Ear hath heard John the Baptist on the banks of Jordan say, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Ear hath heard David's harp. Ear hath heard angelic singing. Ear hath heard even the voice of Jesus himself. I mean, they heard Jesus speak, but those who heard Jesus speak haven't heard anything yet. In heaven, He'll speak in a way ear has never heard before. Ear hath heard. You're free. Ear hath heard. For by grace, you are saved through faith. Ear hath heard. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Ear hath heard. And I, John, saw the holy city coming down from God out of heaven, prepares a bride adorned for her husband. Ear hath heard, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Ear hath heard, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Ear hath heard, there is therefore now no condemnation of them that are in Christ Jesus. Ear hath heard, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Ear hath heard, he that wrote the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Ear hath heard, but God committed his love toward us, and while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Ear hath heard, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Ear hath heard, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Ear hath heard, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Ear hath heard, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted for the river waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever you doeth shall prosper. Ear hath heard, I will never leave thee, or forsake thee. Ear hath heard, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Ear hath heard, Jesus saves. Ear hath heard the new good news of the gospel. Paul, what did you see? I can't tell you what I saw. There are no words to describe it. No phrases, no figures of speech, no parables. Well, what did you hear? You just got to be there. Come on, Paul. Come on. Tell us what you saw can't. Tell us what you heard. I can't. Okay. And Paul, tell us what you imagined it's like. Tell us what you imagined. Make it up. Our old professor in college said, you can't exaggerate heaven. He said, you can exaggerate numbers, you can exaggerate events, <coughs> but he said, tell him anything you want to about heaven. Choose the prettiest house in town, describe it, and say heaven's like that, and you haven't come close. <laughs> Paul, okay, Paul, you can't tell us what you saw, you can't tell us what you heard. Think it up. Paul said, you couldn't even think it up. I have not seen, nor in the heart of, uh, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man. It hath. Entered in the heart of man, a world of peace. It hath entered in the heart of man, a world without illness and disease. It hath entered into the heart of man, a world without pain. It hath entered in the heart of man, eyes without tears, tongue without swearing, a heart without hatred, a mind without evil thoughts. It hath entered in the heart of man, 
perfect love, perfect patience, perfect forgiveness, perfect joy, perfect peace, and perfect gentleness. But think all you want to think. I mean, just dream it up. It's like this and exact. Listen, a little child can fantasize. You, you've seen a little child. A little boy came down and said, Daddy said, there's a bear in my room. He said, Son, there's not a bear in your room. Yes, there is. He said, Son, that's the dog. He said, now Get on your knees and ask God to forgive you for saying there's a bear in your room. Gets on his knees. Father said, Son, did you ask God to forgive you? Yes, sir. He said, What did God say? He said, God said he thought it was a bear at first himself. Let any little three or four or five year old child fantasize about heaven and let him say anything he wants to say, it's going to be scriptural and less. Neither hath entered into the heart of man a world without asp and asthma and alcohol and atheist has entered into the heart of man. A world without bars and booze and broken hearts and bad living hath entered into the heart of man. A world without cancer, coronaries, corruption, and crime hath entered into the heart of man. A world without a devil, danger, death, decay, or diabetes hath entered into the heart of man. A world without envy, evil, endings, enemies, and error hath entered into the heart of man. A world without failure or folly or futility or fraud or fear hath entered into the heart of, heart of man. A world without greed or gout or graves or gossip hath entered into the heart of man. A world without hatred, heart disease, hopelessness, heart attacks hath entered into the heart of man. A world without incest, insects, insults, insolence, and idolatry hath entered into the heart of man. A world without jails or jeopardy or jealousy or judgment hath entered into the heart of man. A world without killing or knives or kerchiefs or keys hath entered into the heart of man. A world without lust or liquor or laziness or lasciviousness or lying hath entered into the heart of man. A world without movies or movie channel or meanness or malice or murders hath entered into the heart of man. A world without narcotics or nudity or night or neglect or needs hath entered into the heart of man. A world without opposition, old age, oppression, or offenses has entered into the heart of man. A world without pride or profanity or prisons or poor or perversion or poverty has entered into the heart of man. A world without quakes or quarrels or quitters or queers has entered into the heart of man. A world without riots, rejection, revenge, retaliation, revolt has entered into the heart of man. A world without strife or sin or scandals or sorcery has entered into the heart of man. A world without tears or tobacco or trials or temptation has entered into the heart of man. A world without unbelief or uncleanness or usury has entered into the heart of man. A world without vice and variance and vengeance and victims has entered into the heart of man. A world without war and wrath and witchcraft and whoremongers has entered into the heart of man. A world without yesterdays or yokes or yearnings has entered into the heart of man. A world without zeros and zombies hath entered the heart of man. A world without liberals and pussyfooters and compromisers and Hugh Hefners and Hollywood and Playboy and uh, rock music and, uh, and Michael Jackson and Prince and, and Madonna and a world without heart attacks and disease, a world without cancer, a world without AIDS, a world without bars, a world without taverns, a world without movies. A world without cursing, a world without filth, a world without vile, a world without sin hath entered into the heart of man, but nobody has ever seen, nobody has ever heard, and nobody has ever thought of anything as wonderful as Dr. Hudson's about to see. Come on, Paul. Come on, Paul. Tell us what you saw. I have no words to describe it. Come on, Paul, tell us what you heard. I have no phrases or vocabulary to describe it. Come on, Paul. Think it up. Okay. It's up north. Paul, what is up north? Okay. 
1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles high, and 1,500 miles long. Okay, Paul, but what is 1,500 miles wide, high, and long? Okay, <laughs> I'll tell you what it's not. Paul, I'm not interested in just what it's not. I want to know what it is. Okay, I'll tell you who's there. Paul, I want to know what's there. Okay, I'll tell you how to get there. Paul, I know how to get there. Now, what, what am I going to get to? Okay, Paul said, I'll tell you how long you're going to be there. I know that, I mean, Paul... How long am I going to be where? <laughs> Paul said, I'll tell you, what kind of foundations are holding it up? I said, Paul, I'm not going to live underneath the place. I'm going to live in it. Now, what's, what are the foundations holding up? Paul said, well, I'll tell you what kind of walls it's got. I want to know what's inside the walls. I'll tell you about its gates. I want to know what the gates are open to. I'll tell you, what's outside? Paul, I'm not going to be outside. I'm going to be inside. Jorgensen's going to be outside. I'm going to be inside. Paul said, okay. I'll tell you, it's gain. What do we gain? It's far better. What's far better? It's not made with hands. What's not made with hands? But it's eternal in the heavens. What's eternal in the heavens, Paul? Good night, you were there. Tell me. I'll tell you who built it. <laughs> who built what? Paul said, well, I can't tell you. Because words can't describe it. I have never seen. Ear hath never heard, and neither hath at any time any man ever conceived or dreamed or thought of the things that God has prepared for those that love Him. But Paul says, I can tell you how to get there. You have to wait. Listen to me, I'm talking to you. You'll have to wait to find out what's there. But you don't have to wait to find out how to get there. If I gave you tonight a free ticket, all expenses paid, <coughs> stay in the finest hotels in the world, fly first class, salary paid, best food, I said, let's start off in Hawaii. How about Oahu? And then how about going to the island of Hawaii? And how about then let's go over to Hong Kong and see that beautiful, beautiful place. And then let's go to the Grecian Isles. And then let's go to Palm Beach. And then let's go to Palm Springs. And then let's go to the Mediterranean and see the blue Mediterranean. Then let us go to Germany and see the castles of Germany. Then let us go to the Caribbean and see the gorgeous beaches and coastlines of the Caribbean. Then let's go to the Panama Canal. And then let's go to Indiana Harbor. I'm sorry. Just want to see if you're listening, that's all. And it's going to be, it takes us a whole year. We'll see every beautiful sight in the world, full paid, salary paid, and you can have your job back when you get back with a raise and pay. He said, don't pressure me. <laughs> Give me time to think. You'd be a fool. I'm telling you a place that is so beautiful, nobody has ever seen its likeness. Music and sound so marvelous that nobody's ever heard their likeness. 
and no mind has ever thought. And it's not just for a year. It's forever. I've heard of a place that's called heaven, sweet home of the happy and free, sweet haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy and free, sweet haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. Paul says, I can tell you how to get there. He said, for by grace are you saved through faith. The same one that couldn't tell you what's there told you plainly how to get there. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That means anybody here tonight realizing that you're a sinner and under the condemnation of God and realizing that Jesus Christ went to Calvary, paid your sin debt for you, rose again for your justification, ascended to heaven, and is sitting at the right hand of God tonight as your intercessor, if you'll say, I'm not going to trust my church, my baptism, my communion, my confirmation, my pope, my pope, my priest, my rabbi, my preacher, but my Jesus, you can go to heaven forever. Why don't you take him up on it? Would you bow your heads, please? Our Heavenly Father, I pray you'd help those people so rude that they're leaving right now to get right with God first. And then I pray you'd help the people here who've never yet accepted God's gift of eternal life. But more than eternal life, eternal life in a place that is so beautiful it can't be described. With music and sound so marvelous they cannot be described with human vocabulary. A place so wonderful even the mind can't even comprehend its loveliness. I pray tonight that people shall come and accept the Savior.